All right, AP Stats, here we go. We are going to talk about rules for means and variances today. First, we're going to go back to Chapter 1 and remember how we did linear transformations. So, we have a quiz here out of 40 points. The average was a 32, and the standard deviation was a 2.5. So, let X be the original quiz score, and Y is going to be the new quiz score. Find the mean and standard deviation. If I chose to make the quiz out of 60 points by adding 20 to everyone's quiz. So our new random variable y is going to be each quiz plus 20 points. So we need to find now what is the mean of y. Okay, well if you remember from the beginning of the year we talked about adding to individual pieces would change the mean also by that much. So this is going to be the mean of x plus 20 is going to be the mean of x plus 20, which is going to be 32 plus 20, which here will be 52. Standard deviation of x plus 20 is Standard deviation of x plus 20 is just going to be the standard deviation of x. Remember, adding doesn't change the spread. It's still the same spread out. It's just in a new range. So it's the same spread out it was before, but the standard deviation is still, so the standard deviation is still 2.5. So part B, now we're going to find the mean and standard deviation if I chose to make the quiz out of 80 points, so I doubled everyone's score. So now we have y equals 2x. So we're going to multiply each individual score by 2 to get the new score. Okay, so what's our new mean? Well, the mean of y or the mean of 2x is going to double the mean of x. So it's going to be 2 times the mean of x, which will be 2 times 32, which will be 64. Standard deviation of y is the same as the standard deviation of 2x, which is 2 times the standard deviation of x, or 2 times 2.5, which is 5. So adding added to the mean. Adding did not change the standard deviation. Multiplying by 2 multiplied the mean. Multiplying by 2 multiplied the standard deviation by 2 also. Part C, what if we make the quiz out of 100 by multiplying by 2? and then adding 20. So if we just think logically about it without using all these symbols and stuff, the new mean oops, of y is going to multiply by 2 and then add 20, which is going to be 84. And the standard deviation of y is going to multiply by 2. The adding 20 is not going to do anything, so this is just going to be 5. So here's that rule right here. Just for means, we're going to talk about means first. So if x is a random variable and a and b are fixed numbers, then the mean of a plus bx is a plus b times the mean of x. So this is our, what we did in that example was the mean of 20 plus 2x was equivalent to 20 plus 2 times the mean of x. Okay, that was from chapter 1. Uh-oh. Now we are in chapter 7, and we're talking about multiple random variables. So if we want to combine two random variables, and we want the mean of them combined, we just add their means together. So, for example, suppose the equation y equals 20 plus 10x converts a PSAT math score into an SAT math score. The average PSAT math score is 48, so mu x, mean of x is 48, fine, mu y. And so we know that it's also going to multiply by 10 and add 20. So we're going to do 20 plus 10 times 48, which is 500. So the mean SAT score is going to be 500. That's the equivalent. So this, again, chapter 1. Now, chapter 7, we've got two different random variables. One is the average SAT math score, and the other one is the average SAT verbal score. What is the average of the combined score? So what is the mean 
if we combine everyone's score together? Well, that's just going to be the mean of x plus the mean of y, which is 625, plus 590, which is 1215. Okay, so means work very easily. People don't really have problems with mean, but variances have a lot of rules. So first we're going to look at the rule that x and y must be independent. So for the variance rules to work, x and y must be independent, and you can quickly see why by reading this example. So if you read through this, you'll see the association between x and y, the dependence on one and the other shows that you cannot add them together. So Moving on with that rule, we have, this is chapter one, which says if x is a random variable and a and b are fixed numbers, so just normal numbers, then adding a does nothing, and b, notice here we're working in variance, we are used to seeing it as the standard deviation of a plus bx will just be b times the standard deviation of x. So if I squared everything, we'd be working in variance. This is variance, and this is standard deviation. So what if we're combining two random variables? This is chapter 7. We want to combine the standard deviation of x and y. Notice we must be working here in variance. We have the option in chapter one, whether we're working in variance or standard deviation, it works both ways. You either square everything or you don't. That does not work here. So if we're adding two random variables like we are right here, then we just add their two variances. Notice now, if we are subtracting two random variables, then we are also adding their variances. This is not a typo. You are always adding variances. You never subtract variances. You never get less variable, okay? Things don't vary less by combining them. And we'll talk about the example of a uh, box of cereal in class. So this is just some examples of that. Make sure that when you're doing standard deviation, by combining them that you're finding the variance and square rooting that. You cannot add standard deviations together. That doesn't work. And it's always the sum. You never subtract. And they must be independent. Okay, so let's look at a similar example here. So here we have the PSAT score. We're converting to an SAT score. The standard deviation for the PSAT score is 1.5. So if Y equals... 20 plus 10x, then to find the new variance, um, actually all we're finding is the standard deviation, so the standard deviation of y, okay, is going to be 10 times the standard deviation of x, which is going to be 10 times 1.5, which will be 15. Now, if you want it to work in variance, or you like working in variance, or because of the stuff we're going to do later in Chapter 7, you're used to working in variance, you can do the variance of x, or the variance of y, I'm sorry, is going to be 10 squared times the variance of x. So this will be 10 squared times 1.5 squared which is 225. So the variance of y is 225. So the standard deviation of y is the square root of 225, which is 15. So either way you work through that and standard deviation or variance doesn't matter. That's chapter one. Chapter seven, it does matter. So if we look at the lottery, which has a mean of 0.5 and a standard deviation of 15.80. So our standard deviation of x is 15.8 and our mean of x is 0.5 so what is the mean and standard deviation of buying tickets three days in a row okay so that means y is going to equal x plus x plus x this is not 3x okay 
they are three different random variables, which is not the same as taking a single random variable and tripling it. So these are three different random variables. They all vary separately. Okay, so we need to be really careful about that. So our mean of y is our mean of x plus x plus x, which is the mean of x plus the mean of x plus the mean of x, which is 0.5 plus 0.5 plus 0.5, which is 1.5, okay? Our standard deviation of y, we need to work in variance here. Our variance of y is going to be the variance of x plus x plus x, which is going to be the variance of x plus the variance of x plus the variance of x, which is going to be 1 point or 15.8 squared plus 15.8 squared plus 15.8 squared which is 748.92 that's the variance of three days in a row of lottery tickets so the standard deviation of x plus x plus x or the standard deviation of y are three days in a row will be the square root of 748.92 which is 27.4. So here's an example you're gonna try on your own now. Um, do the best that you can and we will go over this together in class tomorrow. Have a great day.